Hello fellow fly fishers, this is Lance here from Fly Fish Food and I want to show you a hopper that we've been fishing the last little while. So this is not necessarily an original pattern, this is a variation of a pattern that I was shown by my friends at, on the Green River uh, from Spinner Fall Guide Service, specifically uh, Charles Card and Scotty Barris. And, uh, they fish a fly out there that is very similar to this that I think Scotty calls the Snooky, uh, which is a really clever fly name. This one we've named the Tubular Hopper. It is uh, tubular because we're going to use a little foam cylinder that is literally tubular. Uh, it is a very simple tie for hopper. It floats really well, pretty easy to see, and uh, the last couple of seasons the fish have really liked it on our local water, the Provo, and then we fished very similar flies like Scotty's Snooky. Uh, out on the green with a lot of success too. Uh, if you're looking for a Green River guide trip, uh, we highly recommend the guys over at Spinnerfall, so go give them a look. Otherwise, let's get started here. So I've star I'm starting with a hook in the vise. Uh, it's, this is a Gamakatsu R18, size 10. You'll see that this is a barbless hook and it's also 2X heavy. Uh, it is really not that heavy, as you can see. It's, it is a 2X by Gamakatsu standards, but it's not really a very heavy hook. I would probably say it's more like a 1X heavy compared to most other manufacturers. So I've got that hook in the vise. It has their uh, Nano Smooth Coat, and it's a hook that we've used the last year and a half or so uh, with a lot of our foam dry flies. Uh, and it's, it's strong enough that we don't lose fish on it and it doesn't bend out. So it's become a real shop favorite. Otherwise, uh, we're going to use some of this Montana Fly Company light brown thread in 6 aught, and we'll get started here. One thing to note about this nano smooth coat on this hook is that it's very slick, so sometimes starting the thread is a little more challenging than a normal hook because it just likes to slide back and forth. But if you use a little bit more tension and maybe a couple extra wraps to start the thread, you'll be good to go. So I'm just going to work the thread back towards the bend where I will then get ready to tie in our tube. So the foam cylinder that we're using is a Wopsy foam cylinder. These are a, kind of a brown color. Uh, I think they call this color actually tan. This is a 3 16 size. Easy to get. We've got them online, store.flyfishfood.com. And uh, I'm going to take the end of this little cylinder and I'm going to give it just a, a quick snip here at an angle. So I'm going to use more of the middle and butt of the scissors just to cut a little bit of taper into it. Probably not necessary, you could probably leave it just uh, the way it is, but it adds a little taper to the back end of the fly that I really like. All right, so now I'm going to add this. I'm gonna add about a shank length that I'm going to add as an extended body. So I've measured that shank length, and then I'm just gonna capture it with the thread, pinch down on it. This Montana Fly thread uh, in 6 aught I should mention, is stronger than many other 6 aughts that you've used. So if you're trying to do this with you know, let's say a different brand of 6 aught uh, you may not be able to latch this foam in. This is pretty good thread for this particular type of fly. So I've gone around a couple of times to hold it in place. If you have trouble with your foam spinning like that, then use a little bit of tension and hold the foam on top and just do some wraps around the shank of the hook. And then come back to your segment and wrap in again. And I'm going to elongate this segment a little bit because I'm going to put some rubber legs in here and some hackle. So I'm going to make that segment a little longer, and then I'm going to coat it with the thread. And as you can see now, I've anchored that in. It doesn't want to roll on the hook anymore. Okay, next up we're going to add our legs. The legs are Uniflex in camel. This is a really cool material. It's basically like Spanflex or Flex Floss. If you're familiar with those, it's very stretchy. Um, you'd think that because it's spooled, I know I thought this for a long time, that it would come off the spool in, in a coil, but it's actually, I think, the straightest uh, flexi floss or span flex that we sell. It, I don't know what kind of magic juju they put on it, but it's a really, really neat material that actually comes off very, very straight, even though it's spooled. Okay, so I'm going to add some of this Uniflex. I'm going to wrap it around the thread and capture it here in the back, and then it's hard to see here, but I can now slide this up and down the thread. So I'm going to slide it up to where I, I walk it onto the side, my side of the fly, and just tie it in a Y. We're going to eventually make an X out of it. Uh, the more tension I wrap with the thread, the more the leg will stand out. And the less tension I use, you can see how it's flexing there. The more tension, the more it stands away, and the less tension, the more it lays back. So you can manipulate that leg a fair bit with the thread tension. 
I'm going to get the front of it now and move it where I want it. Then I'm going to cut the front shorter than the, the back so it looks something like that. Then I'm going to come grab the the thread with the, the leg again and rotate it around to your side of the hook. Capture it on the side there. I'm going to pull a little more length out on this side. It's too much length. Let's back it off just a touch. There we go. It's looking more like it. And now I can anchor it in with some tighter wraps and work it back with a little bit more loose wraps because I want these legs to go backward not stand out to the side so much. I want them to lay to the back of the hook. If you wanted to make this really elaborate, you could actually tie knots in those legs and make them hang down. Uh, I've fished both and I don't think that it makes any difference to the fish, but it does make kind of a cool looking fly to have the, the legs that are knotted. Okay, so now we have our legs in place. Next up, we're gonna add the hackle, which is a Coachman Brown hackle. I really like Coachman. If you look at this stuff in the light, it, uh, it really lights up, turns kind of a bright reddish brown color. I'm going to prep just the bottom of this hackle and then we'll tie it in here right in the segment between the legs and I'm not going to use too much care wrapping this hackle because I'm going to trim half of this away anyway. I did three wraps around with the hackle and capture it with the thread, put some wraps in to hold it in place then I'm going to flex that foam, get in here with the scissors and get rid of the stem. So now we've got our rear hackle. Okay, now I'm going to move the thread forward about two thirds of the way up the shank. I'm going to stretch this material just a little bit. I don't want to pull too much, but if you stretch it a little, you'll see that the those front legs move forward a little. I want it just so they're sliding forward with it. Then I'll capture it <clears throat> holding that tension. Again, to make it so it doesn't roll, I'm going to take some wraps just around the shank and then back to our segment again. And I'm going to make this in a little bit more elongated segment also because I'm going to add a wing and some hackle in here. So we'll wrap a nice thread base. <coughs> Excuse me. And we have our foam tied in, nice and tight, good to go. Next up, we're going to add the wing, which is uh, EP Trigger Point. This particular color is uh, Western Caddis Gray. It's a really neat kind of uh, blended color. Let's see if we can get it in focus. There we go. It looks a little darker on the camera. It's actually got a little bit more uh, gray and, and white mix into it. Uh, it's really quite easy to see. And uh, also, the trigger point is treated, so it helps with flotation. And I'm going to, the other nice thing, that actually let me back up, the other nice thing about trigger point is that it's really fine, so it doesn't have a lot of tie-in bulk. So I'm going to lay this in to the segment here, try and pull these legs back, capture it with the thread, and then I'm actually going to fold it back. So I've, I started with half as much wing as I wanted to end up with. That way we don't have to trim any butts away. So if you just had the this exact amount and tied it in, when we when we trim all the excess here, it leaves a little bit more bulk when we tie in, and then it also has more of a tendency to slip out because we've elbowed it in and tied it back over itself. This wing's not coming off. Then we can just trim it to length. I trim it about the same length as the foam. You can leave it longer, cut it shorter, however you want to do that. Then we're going to add the hackle again. Same Coachman Brown hackle. This is a saddle. You could also use a cape, whatever you can get your hands on. Uh, I should mention that I often do these uh, maybe one size too big on the hackle. I like to oversize them just a little bit or maybe half size too big. Um, the hackle I end up cutting as you'll see here in a second and it just works as kind of a uh, oh, like outriggers on the side of the fly to help keep it landing the right way as you're fishing it. So we'll do three or four wraps with the hackle, capture it with the thread, then I'm going to move the thread in front of the foam, put a few wraps to hold the tension, and then again come in with the scissors and cut out the stem. Next up we'll whip finish and get rid of the thread. Use the trusty Tiemco Midge whip finish. Trim that guy away. And then the next to last step is to cut this foam. I like to leave a little bit of a head on them 
not too much, but uh, a little bit of a head, just like a hopper would have. You could go in and trim that if you like, you know, give this a haircut if you like, but I don't think it matters too much. Then the last step is to trim the hackle, and this is optional, but I do this on all of mine just to help with the orientation. They ride a lot better if you really uh, manipulate this hackle a little bit. So I'm pulling the hackle to both sides a little bit to begin with, and then I'm going to come in and with as steady of a hand as I can just trim these hackles off the bottom. Be careful not to trim your legs off. Hopefully they're more out to the side and, and won't get in the way of your scissors. And I've still got a couple here that are standing out a little more than I like. Then once you get it to where it's nice and cut, let's see if you can get a side view. You can see it's basically almost flat on the bottom, so that fly is going to land right side up every cast. And that is a very simple hopper that we call the tubular hopper. Give it a whirl on your favorite trout stream.